Why did they choose your brand? What held them back to try your new or other products? What are they satisfied with? And are they satisfied with the, the product that they received? They should start an AA test and afterwards uh, they should do some experiments and A-B testing. Welcome to our podcast, Click to Buy. We're so happy to have you here. Can you please introduce yourself and what it is that you do? Yeah, I, I feel like I'm, I'm at an interview, <laughs> uh, at the job interview. But uh, yeah, of course, of course. My name is Miklos Kovács and uh, I'm from Hungary, Debrecen, the second largest city. And I'm the podcast host of Have My DTC Grow. And we are helping DTC brands to grow with agency advices. And it's awesome. backed up by Optimunk. And uh, who should listen to your podcast? D2C Brands, who wants to scale up, who wants to grow. They already have a six-figure uh, revenue, but they want to grow to seven, eight, or nine figures. Excellent. Well, Miklos, thank you so much for joining us. I'm so happy to have you today. Um, I love to start off our podcast with asking a couple of kind of hard-hitting, hot topic questions. Uh, there's no right or wrong answer, just your opinion. So we like to call it this or that. So I'll be asking for your hot takes on some common D2C tactics. So let's get started. For example, in your experience, would you recommend that if you could only choose just one, is it better for a brand to use on-site reviews or off-site reviews? So on-site reviews being like something you'd see like on a page versus an external type of review. Yeah, at first when they are starters, maybe they should use off-site reviews. For example, like uh, sending a plain text email uh, and and ask their users, uh, would you would you rate our product, uh, you know, one to five scale, or what was your experience about the product, and just give us a review. And after that, if we if we scale up, if we have enough traffic, maybe I will jump on the on-site reviews. Gotcha. And in terms of let's say testimonials, this or that. You could only pick one video testimonials or written testimonials and why hmm. that's great that's great maybe at first it would be great to have written testimonials but after that it it could be good to have a video uh, review or video uh, testimonials on on our site also so maybe it yeah it has different uh, st a strategy or tactic involved in in uh, in text or video reviews um, text reviews are, are great on the website and, and could enhance uh, the credibility of, of the website and video testimonials could be used on social media and in other parts of the, of the website. True. I guess it also, like you said, it depends on the strategy and the product. Perhaps for some products, it makes more sense to like visually kind of see something in yeah. action. That kind of leads me to my third and final this or that. Yeah. So when you have this kind of visual content if you could only pick one user generated content or professional product photos yeah i i wouldn't repeat uh the previous two question answer that uh before that and after that i would definitely go with user generated content it's a it's a almost a no-brainer so if you have a mom or a friend just grab a phone and do something about it. So user generated content. What do you think is kind of like the best way brands can leverage user generated content on their e-commerce sites? Hmm, that's a good one. Maybe uh, they could they could set up a pop up that is uh, popping up after thirty seconds when they are on the site and on the on the product site on a different mm -hmm. uh, and and coming coming from a different. Uh, uh, for example, from social media or from other sites that are not that that those sites doesn't have any uh, user generated mm -hmm. content or video, uh, mm -hmm. and after that it it just pop up with a video, and they could see uh, how how the product is work, how the product works. Yeah. I like that. It makes sense. Like after you've seen a little bit of intent, someone's staying on your page, then you kind of blast them with like that next like kind of proof point. Yep. Interesting. Well, I know on your podcast, you also speak to a lot of B2C experts out there. So I wanted to ask you 
Um, what's the best advice you've ever received about increasing e-commerce store conversion? The best and the simplest and the, the best and the most simple advice was uh, that know your customer. It is the, it is the ultimate uh, starting point of, of an e-commerce store uh, conversion rate optimization. So if you don't know your customer, maybe you will provide unnecessary data for him, unnecessary information, or, or just confuse him. So before that, uh, you could just, you could just easily, easily, uh, get some feedback in a plain text email that I mentioned before. So mm -hmm. like, why did they choose your brand? What held them back to try your new or other products? What are they satisfied with? And are they satisfied with the, the product that they received? So these basic questions could, uh, could help you know your customer more and, and provide strategies and tactics that are fit for their profile. That's definitely really interesting. I think you make a good point um, and great advice to anyone who's tuning into our podcast. If you don't know what your customer wants, I guess it's pretty difficult to try to get them to convert. Do you have yeah. any other tactics you can recommend? I know you mentioned kind of these written tactics or email tactics. Are there any other strategies you've uh, heard about or used or seen other brands have great success with when it comes to getting to know your customer a little bit better? Yeah, it could be also uh, an on-site pop-up that mm -hmm. will collect feedbacks from, from the customers. So it, it could be anything. Just call them, just uh, reach out to them with, with some questions and experiment in, in almost every two weeks with, with some questions. And after that, you will, you will have some good answers. For example, like uh, somebody, um, somebody so sell like uh, this cold plunge, uh, cold punch uh, baths, you know, mm -hmm. uh, this Wim Hof method stuff. And uh, for me, the only question that I would ask is how much is the maintenance cost and, and uh, how often should I clean these kind of baths? Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I never saw on any page that, that will say this information for me. For example, uh, in 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 Hungarian, it it mm -hmm. it is it isn't there. But if if I give a feedback that I want to I want to get the answer for this question, maybe you will you will just put it on on your landing page on a product page, and I won't be confused. I know the information that I want, and I will buy it. So a uh, lot of reasons. Uh, one of one of the reasons that uh, people don't convert or don't buy is that they have mm -hmm. doubts, they have questions, and you should ask, ask these questions and you will get the answer for it. Excellent. I think that's a really interesting point that a lot of the work that you want to do for conversions is for people like you who are interested in a product, but they have maybe one or two doubts that's holding them back from making yeah. that final purchase. So by getting to know the customers and making that kind of like your routine habit and what you do as a business, you can kind of level up your, hopefully your conversion rates. Yes. Yes, exactly. Uh, kind, of, exactly. kind of bouncing off that question. Obviously, once you get to know your customers a little bit, you can make things a little bit more personal. Uh, so how does personalization relate to the customer journey? It's, it's in the question. Uh, customers want personalized experiences. Like if you, if you walk in, an offline store in a brick and mortar store or a mom and pop's mm -hmm. shop where they ask, how was your day? How's with the kids? Something like that. That is that have a personal touch. And with personalization, you could do a lot of wrong things like creep out the people or, 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 or if you are over personalized, maybe somebody doesn't have any toothache and you want to <laughs> give them painkillers, but, but they don't want this. So watch out with personalization. But if you, if you do it uh, in a good way, it, it, could, uh, it could be an integral part of the customer journey. 
It could involve tailoring your messaging and offers based on the individual's behavior, preferences, and needs at each stage of that journey. So you should research that, research the stage of, of they are in and their customer journey, and you will find personalization tactics that, uh, that you need to apply to harness this. Good one, especially as you mentioned, you don't want it to feel too personal, too quick. I think we've all been there where suddenly something pops up like on our social media feed that we were just talking about, you know, like 10 seconds ago. And maybe that feels like a little eerie, but if you know how to get the right information at the right time in front of someone, I think you have kind of like the golden bullet in terms of conversion. Yep. Yep. I couldn't tell you. I know in terms of personalization and conversion in general, a lot of these tricks have a little bit of like a psychological background to them. So maybe you can share your knowledge on what psychological principles are helpful to know when it comes to understanding conversion. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, Understanding these psychological principles like urgency, social proof, Mm -hmm reciprocity and the decoy effect or even fear of missing out can significantly boost conversion rates. Uh, These principles can be effectively utilized in your marketing strategies, such as creating limited time offers or displaying customer reviews also. So it will give you the social proof if you have some reviews on your website that we talked about the text or video reviews. And, uh, And if you have a lot of traffic, it's uh, better to personalize also the email side. So after you understand your customers, you could start on the on the website and you could capture their data and then uh, send personalized email messages also for for the customers. Interesting. So of these different kind of principles that you mentioned, maybe we can dive deeper into one of one or two of them. For example, like what are different tactics you would suggest for like fear of missing out versus urgency i know they're kind of two similar things but uh maybe you have Mm -hmm. a little nugget of wisdom there Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so for example a a countdown timer that the offer Mm -hmm. is just for a limited time could uh could also i don't know click in the fear of missing out and the urgency stuff Mm -hmm. uh parallel but uh but if if you think about the urgency stuff, it, the booking uh, example is, is the best, that they are showing how many people are looking at the same hotel room and how many rooms mm-hmm. are left, and uh, it's inspiring customers to book it quickly. But uh, another one, like fear of missing out, it's, it's like uh, we have a, at Optimonk, we have a Trojan horse method, which uh, mm-hmm. involves asking for, for the customer's email address, and afterwards, uh, they could unlock a mystery discount if they give their SMS number also. So mm-hmm. it's it's also scarcity and also fear of missing out. If if they don't give their their email their their SMS number, maybe they will uh, left something on the table. Yeah, quite interesting. Also to make them feel kind of like they have this exclusive opportunity that they didn't perhaps expect from originally signing up. Yes. Yes. It's yeah. Like well, you've given a couple of great examples already, but are there any other brands that have inspired you with their conversion tactics? Maybe you have a couple memorable examples. Mm-hmm. Uh, Opting Monk has a customer called Blanchett. Maybe the listeners mm-hmm. will will know this. And, oh yes, uh, I I have a Blanchett. <laughs> <laughs> great, 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 uh, and they use scarcity. And it was created by a limited time offer that I also also said it before. Uh, a pop-up displayed the customers uh, offered. So a pop-up was displayed and the customers saw a limited time discount and a counting down for 15 minutes. This made the offer feel scarce and time sensitive. So encouraging customers to act quickly or, or it is a risk that they are missing out the deal. By implementing this principle, Blanchett was able to generate an impressive increase in this in its revenue. 
interesting. I definitely get what you mean that like, like you said, it kind of all comes back to the psychological principles we discussed, like this urgency, this fear that if I don't click now, it's not yeah, going to ever be able to go into my card. Yeah, yeah. But don't overuse them because uh, people are much more sensitive uh, for yeah. this today than before. But of course, mm -hmm. there will be, I don't know, 50 percentage of people will always act irrationally. Or, or more than 50, maybe, maybe a 100 percentage of the people. So afterwards, we are, we are just uh, saying for ourselves that, that, yeah, it was a mm -hmm. rational de decision to, to buy a, two blend jet and not just one. Maybe that's kind of a good question to dive a little bit deeper into. I think what you said was quite interesting. Um, you have to be careful not to go like too heavy on these sorts of tactics. How can brands balance um, these tactics so it doesn't feel too like like too many ads or too like in your face but still pushing people towards the action you'd like them to take the first and foremost stuff is uh is this email text stuff is coming back again mm -hmm. so if if you send these questions out in the email in 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 plain text for your for your best customers and mm -hmm. watch for these answers you will get all the information you need for content for your website. So for on your website, you could use those terms and expressions that, that your customers use. So it won't be as uh, as eddy <laughs> or or as uh, as as uh, fabricated than than before. So you could you could experiment with these little stuffs that you you have. Uh, just use the expressions that your customers use and it, it won't be it won't be fabricated yeah yeah like you said it all goes back to knowing your customer yeah it all goes back to this <laughs> first part the have... zero part of the customer journey yeah it all it all starts there when you're thinking about conversion um, and maybe this will also apply to people you've had on your own podcast. Do you have any tools that you can recommend uh, that people can use to improve their conversion for, let's say, any part of the customer journey? Yeah, before before I I mention some tools, it would be the mindset that you have to experiment uh, mm -hmm. relentlessly, for example, in any two weeks with some little stuffs on your website. And it will, it will be... Uh, a habit for you and uh, afterwards you could choose the best tool for this habit so for example Optimonk is a, is a great tool for list building segmenting personalization and so on and so on but uh, I'm not here to promote Optimonk so I will <laughs> I will mention some other stuff so for example like uh, A-B testing Optimonk could also do A-B testing but a free stuff that could do a b testing is microsoft clarity you could use it uh, on your own and it's it uh, and, and you could learn it and lots of youtube uh, material are out there and also google analytics triple whale could be good to analyze your data and and see what's working and what's not and also mm -hmm. hotjar is a good uh, good one to to heat maps Interesting. So I'll definitely have to link those in the show notes. Mm -hmm. uh, a couple of our other guests have mentioned uh, the idea of using AI to help with conversion. Mm -hmm. I'm curious, do you have any thoughts on this? Do you have any tools that you can recommend yeah. or are you warning against it? Uh, curious for your opinion. <laughs> yeah, almost everything is about AI and ChatGPT today. But mm -hmm. uh, I would say that AI could do the stuff that uh, humans could do it in a much longer time. So mm. AI is uh, not resting, he's not uh, sleeping. So it could test out different headlines, different uh, text messages, different messages on your website when you are sleeping. So we also have some features like it's called uh, smart A-B testing, which also you are the, uh, the zero point of, uh, of of the ID generation, of the experiments, what do you want to, to A-B test? And, uh, and the smart A-B tester will, will, do, uh, will do it on, on their own to test uh, headlines, uh, different IDs. So 
so it could it could help you to lay back and and just uh, harvest the results. Yeah, really. Yeah, it, it sounds it to... sounds really easy, but uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> it's not not that easy. I'm sure, as you said, like it's kind of like all the rage right now. So maybe since we're kind of on the beginnings of these things, they might become more easy. I like what you said of how like you kind of have to come up with the premise and then the machine kind of runs with it. I think a lot of what I've heard from the other people we've interviewed have had kind of the same things at the moment. So I'll be very intrigued in even a couple of months to hear if there's any new tools that have popped into this space. Um, or maybe new features and existing tools that will help to leverage the power of AI in this space. Hmm. Yeah, well, we are we are experimenting with AI, and mm -hmm. uh, and uh, it helps us to personalize uh, landing pages and and website and also pop ups. So, mm -hmm. for example, if you are searching for for from uh, Hungary, you will get uh, a country specific pop up. Uh, which mm. is included your 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 country of origin, so you you would be sure that uh, uh, they are shipping to your country, and maybe you have some discount codes uh, based on the country also. Um, yeah, so basically, it's our beta fe feature now at Optimum, mm -hmm. but it 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 will be uh, good for brainstorming new variants of of text mm -hmm. messages or setup those variants and run the tests and evaluate the results and mm -hmm. uh, afterwards it could make a decision because it's also a mathematical uh, decision mm -hmm. so if it has the probability of uh, of of so so you could decide which which version is the winner and uh, stop the loser variant and restart the test and repeat this cycle yeah gotcha Nice. Well, thanks for sharing your kind of insight there on the future of AI. Uh, and maybe a more general question. What do you think most businesses get wrong when it comes to improving their customer journey? Hmm. Uh, first and foremost, they have to set up everything correctly. So okay. that's the base where they could grow. And uh, they should start an AA test and afterwards, uh, they should do some experiments and A-B testing. But of course, um, as you mentioned before, that they have to give the right message, the right time for the right people. And this requires some research. It's collecting feedbacks and, and other stuff that we are talking about. But for example, if you believe that uh, uh, from a landing page, they will navigate to your product page, I have to say that it's not every time the case. So they either could land on your product page and also if they are not getting the right message or you start explaining the product page, if they have already something in their mind, you will be surprised. Not everybody is an expert on, on, on your own product. Just do a mom mm -hmm. test on it uh, or ask a drunk friend if they understand what the product is about <laughs> and your product page will be good uh, and your landing page will be also uh, improved. Other than that, you need to modify until it will be understandable to everybody. It's a really good point, especially I love how you say like run the mom test or the mm -hmm. drug friend test. Indeed, like you need to make sure your message is simple, your message is clear. And you also pointed out a really common problem is how do you get people to go from that landing page to your product page where hopefully they'll convert? Mm -hmm. Do you have any tips on how brands uh, maybe D2C brands can optimize their homepage to hopefully bring people where you would like them to go? Mm. Yeah, I'm, I'm afraid I have to say I don't know any tactics <laughs> about that. That's all right. Yeah. <laughs> We've spoken about many other tactics yeah. out there. Um, but I think like it's a really good point, like what you said about testing your pages for like the AA test and the mom test and whatnot. Um, where do you go when you're kind of looking for inspiration on these sorts of tactics to improve the customer journey? Like, do you have any resources we can shout out or share here as well? Yeah, Optimum has a tactic library about Perfect. that. Perfect, okay. <laughs> uh, but uh, other than that, that uh, I'm a podcaster and I am I listen to some of the podcasts and, and follow some influencers uh, mm -hmm. on, uh, on LinkedIn, like Adam Kitchen or... Louis Camp or 
or Christopher Hopp or Fia Keel, I, I would recommend uh, to follow these these guys on LinkedIn. LinkedIn has a really good source of of knowledge. Nice. Thanks for the shout out. Um, and I actually have a question for you from mm -hmm. a previous guest. So I love to end oh. our podcast by bringing a question from a previous guest, and then you'll mm -hmm. have a question. You'll have the chance to ask a question to the next guest. Uh, so a previous guest of ours would like to know, um, what is something when it comes to conversion that you wouldn't expect to work, but does work? Like what's something that's kind of counterintuitive when it comes to conversion tactics? Hmm. That's a good one. That's a good one. Lucky wheel. <laughs> or, yeah. Or yeah, it, it always works. Almost always works on, on desktop, but uh, everybody's tired of it. Uh, <laughs> it, it could, it would, it could work. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or using some uh, psychological uh, stuff in, in your, in your, in your on-site messages. So, mm -hmm. for example, if if you have a, a boring pop up, it will it will just give you I don't know three percentage of of the conversion rate. But if you make a temporary offer or 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 some uh, random mystery campaign, it could it could uh, climb up to twenty percentage in in conversion rates. Yeah. Oh, perfect. Thank you. Well, I'll definitely uh, pass that advice along to our guest who asked you that question. And mm -hmm. now you have a chance for our last question here. What mm -hmm. is the question you'd like our next guest to answer? It can be anything in the realm of conversion, high level, low level, the floor mm -hmm. is yours. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, my question would be um, like how to research my audience to make the best landing page ever. Okay. So it comes like back it. to know your customer. Know your customer. So, how can you research your land, your customer to make the best landing page ever? Yeah. All right. Well, I'll get back to you with a response, Miklos. Great. Thank you. It was such a pleasure to have you on the show today. You're welcome, uh, we're So happy to have you, and thanks again for listening to another episode of Click to Buy.